Christians be lit. Welcome to A Pastor's Life for Me. Last part on our series, we talked about what it meant to be the salt of the earth. If you haven't seen that video yet, go watch it first. In Matthew 5 verses 13 through 16, Jesus says that we are the salt of the earth and the light of the world. I want to remind you of what John MacArthur said. This passage says that we are the salt and light of the world. Not we're supposed to be or we should be or here's how to be. It says that we are. The question is whether or not we are effective as salt and light. So. What does it mean for us to be light? I think that we probably know what light is and what it does. But a very basic definition is that light pushes away darkness. It illuminates. We say, turn on the light or turn off the light. When you think about it, it really doesn't make much sense to say, turn off the darkness, turn on the darkness. Shadows are a good example of this. If I take a light and point it behind me, it'll put my shadow in front of me. I block the light and create an area of darkness. But at no point will I ever move the darkness to move the light. I don't take the shadow and move the light. Does not work. Because darkness is the absence of light. Sin is everything that is contrary to God and His decrees. So it makes sense that if we are the light of the world, we do not follow the sins of the darkness, but the goodness of the light. Galatians 5 is a good example of this. Paul says, But I say that if you walk in the Spirit, you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the desires of the flesh are against the Spirit. Darkness is following the desires of the flesh, as Paul says in verses 19 through 21. And this leads to condemnation. Light is the fruit of the Spirit, as Paul lists in verses 22 through 24. And in this, there is no condemnation. John says in his first letter that God is light, and in him there is no darkness. If we say that we have fellowship with him while we walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus cleanses us from all sin. To be in the light means that we follow God and we obey his commands. God knows that we're not gonna do this perfectly. We will mess up and sin pretty much every day. But that's why John later writes, My little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Christ Jesus the righteous. He is the propitiation for our sins, not our sins only, but also for the sins of the whole world. God does not expect us to be perfect because we have a sin nature. But when Christ died for us, he took our sins upon himself. Not only that, but he also gave us his perfect status. We do not have to live a perfect life because Jesus lived it for us. Does that now mean we can do whatever we want? Of course not. In fact, Paul answers this question in Romans 6. What then shall we say? Shall we sin so that grace may abound? And he answers it in the strongest way that he can. May genoita, by no means. Why? How can we who have died to sin still live in it? Now, I know we've gone down a little bit of a rabbit trail, but I think it's important. We are tackling the question, what does it mean to be the light of the world? Well, one thing is that we remain blameless and pure, that we obey what God teaches us. How we display our faith and obedience is a testimony to the world, like a light that shines in darkness. Just like how this room would be very dark if we blew out all these candles. And this goes back to one of our videos where we ask, can we have perfect faith? Of course we cannot, but Jesus did. Probably the best example of this would be the sun and the moon. The sun is the source of light for the earth. Its light is literally blinding. But when we look up at the sky at night, we see that the moon glows. 
Now, where does the moon get its light? From the sun. The moon is an object that reflects the light of the sun. Jesus is the sun. His light is blinding to the world. And when he returns, the whole world will see this blinding light. But until Jesus returns, we are the light of the world. We reflect Jesus as the moon reflects the sun. So though the world is very dark, people will still see our glow. It is a testimony of God's grace unto the world. So we, as the light of the world, are a testimony of the gospel and God's goodness to the world. We show the world God as we imitate Christ. Being the light of the world means that we not only show people God, but we also show them that they are in complete and utter darkness. My daughter is going through this period where she's scared of the dark, a fear that many young children have. She had a couple nightmares and we now keep a nightlight in there so she sleeps better. And it helps her to not be afraid at night. But when you think about it, being scared of the dark makes sense. Which would you rather, being lost in the middle of a bright day where you can see your way and possibly find home, or being lost in the dark where you roam around tripping over things, running into things, and having no idea what dangers surround you? When you go online, would you rather go onto the internet or the dark web? Some of you may think, hmm, it might be cool to check out the dark web. Now well, that may or may not be true, but what happens when you expose yourself to it? You open yourself to a world of dangers. Now hackers can get all your information and you run the risk of losing your identity. It's the same with the Christian life. The darkness is full of dangers. And when we walk in the darkness, we roam around tripping over things and running into things and not knowing the predators that are around us. And there are people and there are demons who are trying to destroy our identity. And if you are in the light, then they will stop at nothing to push you back into the darkness. Do you want to know what's the worst position for you to be in? To be in a position where you believe that you are in the light, but you are actually engulfed in darkness. The hardest people to come to saving faith are those who believe they actually have it. Do you want to know another dangerous position to be in? Dipping your finger into that darkness. Just a small dip. But that is all it takes. That's why Paul said in 1 Corinthians 5, 5, when he spoke of a man who was like this, you are to deliver this man over to Satan for the destruction of his flesh. Why? Why would Paul say that? So that his spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord. Paul said this because sometimes people need to hit rock bottom. Sometimes people need to be dragged through the depths of the darkness to know that they are in it. We should be very cautious of the dark, almost to the degree of having a healthy fear of it. This is not a fear or a caution that drives us to the dark or drives us to hide or be idle in our faith, but drives us to the light. When we see the destructing nature of the darkness, we need to flee. We must flee. It's understanding that we are free in Christ, but recognizing that we're still sinners and that we need to be guided by the Spirit. And we need to recognize that the darkness is a serious temptation for us. We are in the light, but we see darkness all around us. We shine and we are not to be overcome, but at the same time, we need to remember that we came out of the dark. And though it tries to pull us back in, we are held in the arms of the Father. As Peter says, that you may declare the praises of him who brought you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. So what does it mean to be the light of the world? It means that we shine in the darkness. Our lives are a testimony to the world of God's goodness and of the gospel of Jesus Christ. So to be salt and light of the world means that we share the gospel with the world as we are a testimony of the true light. 
but tell me what you think. I'd love to hear about it in the comments. And if you make a good point, I'm going to put it in part three of this video as we talk about what happens when Christians don't behave as salt and light. In our last video, when we talked about us being the salt of the earth, one of my friends commented about how when he grew up in Bolivia, people would say that's salted when they're referring to something that was cool or awesome. And I thought, that's pretty cool. Salted, you could say. And I thought, you know, that's kind of a good point. We as the salt of the earth have the most salted message that there is out there. The gospel is awesome. It's amazing good news. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and share this video with your friends. Give this video a like and remember that we are the light of the world. We need to know the word, do the word, and share the word. But as always, we do it in love.